you. I hope you have been paying attention as you turn to our New Testament reading found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, that we have been repeating that Sunday that we are reading about and celebrating today. We as a congregation have been repeating the actions and the words. Hear how many actions and words that we have done this morning that you hear in this text. Matthew 21, 1 through 13. And so as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. Jesus answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, Jesus said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. This is the word of God for us today. Thanks be to God. Oh, how we love a parade. We love them because they celebrate something good and wonderful. Maybe it's the season of the year. Maybe it is to celebrate a triumph. Certainly to celebrate winners. We love a parade. Jesus today is riding into Jerusalem on a donkey and it indeed was a celebration parade. The Messiah-hungry crowd witnessed and they interpreted Jesus' arrival as it had been written by the prophets of the Old Testament, many of which we have read today and there are others. They saw this as their day. It was a hero's welcome. It was Jerusalem's equivalent of a ticker tape parade. But instead of confetti, it was palms. The Jewish Messiah is coming. As one poet put it into the words of those gathered around Jesus that day, he's coming straight to Jerusalem's gate. The folks were excitedly saying, so let's get out there in the open air and show the Romans for what we've been praying. They just knew this was it. And they were so excited. It's even Matthew saying the whole city was shaken and people were asking, who is this? Who is this? And for a while now, in Matthew, if we have been paying attention, Matthew has been attempting to help us understand the answer to that question. Who is Jesus? Remember at Caesarea Philippi, even out of Jesus' own mouth, who do people say that I am? Just a prelude to this day. But then he turns and he says, who do you say that I am? But then as if to make sure nothing was left unturned, Jesus' own lips make a prediction. Yes, I am the Messiah. But wait, wait. Make sure you know what that means. Because people will be asking. And that's why today, we must be careful. Enjoy the parade, yes. Shout Hosanna and hallelujah and rejoice in wonderful music, but do not lose sight of Jesus. For if we will stay close to Jesus and follow him, we will indeed learn what the Messiah means and we will learn very quickly. For our text, it's, it's almost an abrupt, very abrupt change there. 
This is Jesus when he entered the crowd and people are shouting Hosanna in the highest and they're waving palms. And then very quickly Jesus jumps down off that donkey and makes his way to the temple pushing aside those palm branches parting the crowd as in the spirit he had parted the Red Sea. And people were making their way. And I have to believe that as he began to make his way around to that temple. And as he began to enter in those steps and walk through those doors. People were going, oh, this is it. I thought it'd take a little bit of time. But he's going to step up there right now. Turn around on that temple porch and shout, out you demon Romans. And come on in, glory of Israel. Nope. He's gone to clean house. He goes and overthrows the tables of the money lenders and of those in that temple. And suddenly the people who one moment were shouting, Glory, 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 Hosanna in the... <laughs> what? You see, at the time of Jesus... Almost the whole economy of the temple and the Jewish culture was based upon the temple and its sacrificial system. System of buying and selling sacrificial animals and changing whatever money people brought into the exclusive temple currency. The excited crowd is stunned. For rather than endorsing the status quo, rather than being the Messiah they wanted, Jesus has turned the tables on them, literally. And herein lies the challenge for us today. It's really very simple. Who are we going to follow? The crowd? Well, they like winners. They like their conveniences. They like being in the places of power. That is why the crowds will move so quickly from Hosanna to crucify him. So Jesus pushes back against their expectation of what the Messiah would be as they wanted it. And they did not like it. You'll remember it was the words of Martin Luther King Jr. who said this, The truth will set you free, as Jesus said, but first it will make you very angry. And it will. All along, Jesus has spoken of rejection and suffering. And even the own disciples are saying, oh, no, 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 no. You've got that wrong. Our Messiah is going to be at the head of the parade. You see, suffering doesn't mark it well. I doubt if we put on our church sign out front, come with us and join us Sundays. We learn how to suffer and be rejected like Jesus. Some of you might not even show up. We don't like a hung up to die Jesus. That's not the idea of the God we want. We want a strong and powerful God, an omnipotent God who's in control, a God of majesty and glory. That's why there was an article recently about an architect who had designed a large, brand new church in California. And he was pretty adamant about refusing to use a cross anywhere. We do not want any crosses, he said, at the church, either outside or inside. None. We don't want anybody to think of failure or weakness. Why would we want a symbol of a man slumped dead on a cross after his few friends have gotten out of Dodge? That sounds a little harsh to us. We have a cross. Here, I'm standing behind a cross today. We wear crosses for us. But it's still the question, am I with the cross or am I with the crowd? That's why Holy Week, this week that we began today, it's called Passion Week. That's why it is the center of the Christian life. All four Gospels, in all of them, this week is the climax of Jesus' story. All of them tell their story to come to this 
week. And let me remind you that no other world religion or faith system has at its center a man condemned to die by public torture. We can follow the crowd. Or we can follow Jesus. He will go into Jerusalem. He will clear the temple. And then he will leave. And we have a choice to make. Will we stay with the crowd? Or will we walk with Jesus back out? Maybe our mouth hung wide open. Maybe our expectations dashed and crushed. But will we follow Jesus? It is his request to us, by the way. This week, as in the life of Jesus, on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, the crowds welcomed him in on this day. But it's a smaller crowd that followed him. And we can join smaller groups. We have many opportunities this week for you to follow in the steps of Jesus. If you're able, come join us at St. Mark's every noonday this week, Monday through Friday. It's a very brief service, 12 to about 12.30 or a little, little less. Every day we will just try to hear where Jesus is in the week and pay attention to that. But if you're not able to do that, I encourage you to make your journey here Thursday night as we'll be over in the sanctuary where we can share in that last meal with Jesus. We can, can watch as he agonizes over the night and we can stand with him Maybe fall asleep like the early disciples did. And then this year, we have another opportunity Friday night here in this room to watch and to witness the horrible and terrible events of that day that occurred because of love. I encourage each of you to take any of the Gospels or take all of them And take a little bit of time each day just to read between today's triumphal entry. And don't rush to Easter. Spend some time in each gospel in between those times. Listen, watch, place yourself in there. Follow Jesus. For if we choose to follow Jesus rather than the crowd, we will indeed learn what it means to be God's Messiah. It will not be easy, I promise you. The crowds that turned away from Jesus will turn away from us. The crowds that hunted Jesus down will hunt us down. The crowds that accused him will accuse us. And in some ways, the crowds that crucified him will crucify us. Now we're beginning to see why it may just be easier to stand with the crowds. Palm Sunday is, in many ways, a false start. As we have said, Jesus comes into the city. Everybody's excited. Everybody's ready. Here we go. But then he challenges the status quo, and then he leaves. No revolution yet. But the journey has begun. The journey to the cross has now been set in motion. Certainly we will celebrate next Sunday the resurrection. But first, we will have to follow Jesus through Thursday night and Friday. And it is in this journey that we will see God's love truly and most intimately revealed for is in this journey from this triumphant gate to the resurrection we discover that God is not only present in moments of glory but even more powerfully God is present and working in our moments of suffering and despair we like parades but it is Christ's passion. 
It is this week in the life of Christ, as Gary prayed so wonderfully well, Jesus had a choice. And at every point chose the way of the cross. We have a choice. Will we follow the crowd? Or will we follow Jesus? And if we choose to follow Jesus, it will change us forever. Thanks be to God. Father, we come today, first of all, giving thanks for your obedience. That indeed at every point in this week, at every opportunity for you to cut and run, at every opportunity for you even not just to run, but to embrace the crowd and have them shout. You chose obedience, for none of those other things would have cleansed us of our sin. None of those other choices would have made our relationship with the Heavenly Father right. So we pause to give thanks on this day. A day when you could have just reveled in the praise. You stopped it quickly. And reminded us all that this coming week will be difficult for you. You ask us to follow you now, Jesus, and that now becomes our prayer. God, we have many distractions in our lives that can keep us from following you this week. First and foremost, we don't like suffering any more than you did. We don't like rejection. We like to be accepted and love to have the crowd gather around us. So, Father, first of all, we pray for strength to overcome our own self. But second, we know that if we follow you, we just might be accused as you were. So, Lord, give us strength this week. Give us the courage to stop each day and to pay attention to where you were and what you were doing. We are people of faith. This is a week that is different for us. So help us to embrace it, that we might be embraced by you. Father, help us to choose to follow you this day. We pray this in the name of the obedient Suffering Christ.